homeless folks will avoid seeking care until the last possible moment. They have to be to the point where they can't get up and live their life. They physically can't drag themselves around. They have a fever. They're hallucinating. That is when they will finally submit to going to the emergency room. A handful of our clients are very um, aggressive about their own wound care. They'll clean their pocket knife and actually debride off dead tissue around wounds to avoid having to go into the ER on their own. Yeah, that's the level of sort of avoidance we're working with, where they're willing to do that. Want to give it a slam? Just for no? Yes, sir. It's Monday morning. We're getting caffeinated. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, the van runs on caffeine, without a doubt. So we, uh, we've got all our medical supplies loaded up. Uh, they were all stocked yesterday. We brought some uh, of our food for our normal giveaways with socks, warm blankets, jackets, and the like. People on the street have a lot of walls. People on the street have a lot of walls. They have a lot of walls. We can never know until we engage and get to know them what their issue is. But the main thing is to be a relationship with them. Because, you know, uh, homeless people need friends. They need somebody they can't trust. They need somebody that's going to uh, show up when they say they're going to show up. Or when they can't show up, at least get in contact with them and let them know they still coming. I grew up, I was born and raised here. I went to that school down the street, Avondale, you know. Um, neighborhoods changed a lot. It used to be it used to be kind of affordable here. Gentrification's hit it hard, you know. It's kind of kind of weird how I made like a big circle and came back to here, you know. Well, my name's Dave. I'm 57 years old. Um, I don't know what else you want to know. Uh, got a little addiction problem. That's part of the reason I'm out here. Um, trying to battle it, it's hard. <laughs> uh, worked all my life, you know, this is, I, I've raised my family, I've had houses, you know, I've, I've, I had all that. It just like, seemed like I hit 50 and I went, pew. <laughs> I had some health problems, lost my job, had a couple surgeries, and of course that got me hooked on painkillers and it just kind of drifted off into that, you know. Um, The times I've been in the emergency room, you know, where I had to had to go to the emergency room, you know, and I try to be truthful and honest, you know. I mean, you know, you know, and they want to give me something for pain, I got to tell them, you know, hey, one Vicodin isn't going to do it. I have a habit, you know, and it seems like that just flicks the switch, and they have a whole general outlook of what you're what you're about, you know, and you get judged a lot more. I barely go to the doctor because of that, you know. The type of care that we provide here, we, it's just like a primary care uh, clinic on wheels. We deal with high blood pressure, uh, we deal with uh, hyperthyroidism and any of the kind of things, asthma, COPD, things that you deal with in a regular clinic, except it's in this setting, right? So it's a big difference. Last Yeah, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. That time it's going to change in the weather, it's going to bother. Yeah, it's affecting you. Okay, we'll, we'll get you that. So, asthma care. <laughs> I did primary care as a as a nurse practitioner for five years before getting to this job, and you have a you have a a clock, a stopwatch in your mind, and and out here you need to unplug the clock when you're engaging someone about something completely non-medically related, that's just as important in the job as then, because it's gonna create that relationship to get them to that medical care.
There's the numbers we can easily talk about, which are, you know, the ER visits that we prevent by getting treatment to people. When we get them into primary care, the follow-up care that we do for folks so they don't get back to the ER, um, those are very Western-friendly, tangible things that we can talk about, and they're very important. Um, but there's a lot more that goes into it and a lot more advantages that we see uh, every day. This is why m most providers, nurses, social workers, doctors get into the field is to be with people and help people. And it's through our training and the realities of the system that we have to f pull back from that. But street medicine is exactly that. You go to where they are and you meet them where they're at. It's, it's what, it's providing love and care like we wanted to when we were in school. And that's, we're lucky enough to be able to do that daily.